G'day guys, um, Dr. James Simcock here. Um, just doing a short video for you on a patient that we saw today, um, which is a one-year-old cavi that presented with a grade four medial patella luxation. And just wanted to run through what we did with this case, which is effectively a distal femoral osteotomy for femoral varus, we can see on this X-ray here. And then we also did a tibial crest transposition. So just wanted to kind of walk through the planning of this case and um, using this awesome program, VPOP Pro, which is what I do a lot of my orthopedic planning on. Um, and just wanted to kind of highlight this issue of distal femoral varus in these cases and, and why that's important and, and how we actually correct it. So I guess the first thing to remember is when we're looking at these medial patelluxation cases, you want to assess the alignment, particularly between the quadriceps apparatus, the trochlear groove here, and then the attachment point of the patella tendon on the tibial crest down here. And you can see this patella sitting all the way out here. And, and as I said, this is a grade four luxation. So when we have a femoral varus um, like this, what that does is create a bowing in the femur and it really medializes this attachment point of the patella tendon. So the femoral osteotomy that we do is to identify where the core is or the center of rotation um, of angulation um, in the femur, in the bone. And then we wanna plan a wedge here that we take out and then we actually want to um, execute an osteotomy. So what I've done here is looked at the anatomic axis, which is represented by this line here. I put a joint reference line down here and we can see that this number here, 114 degrees, is the um, lateral um, anatomic, um, lateral, sorry, it's the anatomic lateral femoral virus angle. Um, and that's 114 degrees. And um, what we've also then done is put another um, line um, adjacent to this joint reference line, which has got an angle about 95 degrees, which is the, um, the normal anatomic lateral femoral angle. Um, and so based on those two measurements, we can work out where the core is up here. And using this really cool device from VPOP, um, it's got a, a wedge cutting device. So I can actually now go ahead and cut out the bottom of the bone like this and hit done and that actually takes out the wedge and effectively we can see what kind of straightening we get. So this was the planning that we did um, to work out exactly where we want the wedge to be. So we wanted it to be about 43 degrees. I'll just reset that so we can see this here. We wanted that to be about 43 millimeters from the, the joint surface. Um, we can measure how big a wedge we need to take out. So if I zoom in here, oops. If I zoom in here, we can work out how big this wedge wants to be. So I can run a line down here and work out how big a wedge we wanted to take out. It was about three millimeters in this guy. So that wedge that we want to take out was about yeah, three and a half millimeters. So that was the planning. And um, when we come back and look at the post-op x-rays um, to see how good a job we did, um, this is the radiograph here. So we can see our anatomic axis now down here. We can see where we made our osteotomy, straighten the leg out. I actually just used a 2.4 locking um, straight plate in this case, because the, um, the core was quite far away from the joint, so I didn't need to use a specific DFO plate. And then if we look at the lateral view, um, post-operatively, we can see our plate here. We can see we also had to do a tibial crest transposition for this particular case to get that patella tracking nicely. We did have to do quite a large medial release on the, um, the medial, um, medial uh, connective tissue and medial fascia. Um, but once we've done that, the patella is tracking normally and it's totally solid afterwards. So I guess really the important thing here was just to look at the planning and, and what we've done um, in this particular case. And just to have you guys really understand about the impact of distal femoral virus on medial patella luxation and, and try to identify that before you start. And we've looked at an X-ray here in most situations that we want to take a CT scan because it can be very difficult to get a truly accurate um, craniocortal or cortocranial view um, of the femur um, just on conventional x-rays alone. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, this is just one of those videos we're making for our members only channel. So if you have any feedback on these videos, want to know about something in particular, um, certainly do let us know. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.